How are we doing everyone? MJS, owner and founder of Find a Tech here with you again today. I want to talk about something in this video. I've been working on it uh, for the better part of the day because I've had this for a while, this concept. I think it's kind of new to people or to certain people, depending on how you have your setup. But the idea of, let me set the scene. You have a client or you want to start a new website, whether it's for a client or for yourself. We're talking WordPress here. You know, that's what we use. And you have a situation where you need to spin up a new instance of WordPress, basically a new uh, website for a client or for yourself. And you have like a lot of plugins that you like to use. And you know, maybe you have a theme and everything like that. Really just trying to increase your efficiency because one, that's one of my biggest things is I like to be as optimized as possible. And I want to just make sure that I can pump out new websites as quickly as possible. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about mine specifically and maybe some ways that you can, you know, adapt yours to, uh, you know, based on the tools that you like to use. So the objective of this video is to tell you exactly how I do it, given my, you know, hosting provider, giving the tool, given the tools that I use, the plugins and everything I like. I'm going to give a very high level. I'm not going to go super deep. This video is still probably going to be long because that's normally what happens with my videos. But I'm not going to go like super deep into every plugin that I use. I'll give you the high level of it. And then if you'd like to learn more, definitely drop a comment down below and I'll make more, more content specific to those types of things as we move forward here. But I wanna give you this idea um, and I will have links to everything in the description um, and on the website as well as I continue to build that out. That's a whole separate discussion. But this is, I'll just you know kind of start from the top here. So I'm gonna give you my instance of the way that I uh, do this as a part of the business and a part of designing websites. So a client comes to me, you know, we engage in all the back and forth stuff, which we'll have more content on that as well. I want to share all that because I've, you know, evolved things over time as far as like the actual sales process, but specifically from the development side, uh, we need to spin up a new website, right? All of us have to do it. And in WordPress, there's a few different ways. I mean, you could, if you have hosting and you, you know, if you have shared hosting, which I wouldn't really recommend, but if you have shared hosting, then you basically just say like, you want to add a new website. It's been a while since I've been on there. And then you go through the steps of installing WordPress, another instance of WordPress, and then you get a fresh install of WordPress and you're off to the races, but it's all, you know, very, you know, like it's, it's at level one, right? You can see in here, I already have things installed. We'll talk about that. That's the point of this. I'm just saying you want to get from signing the contract to de to actively developing as fast as possible. So this, these steps right here would make this go so much faster. And there's a lot of things packed in here that you're going to need anyway, that you probably should consider. So that's what the, uh, the point of this is in my instance, I use cloudways for hosting. Now cloudways has a really cool feature where you can go into an application. You can like right click on it or, you know, whatever, go to the, the, um, the, uh, you know, the settings of it and then clone the app or create a staging. So let's say that you have a server on Cloudways. Um, again, separate video on that uh, link somewhere here if you want to check it out. Um, I've been using it for probably two or three years. It's been great. Um, you can clone an application. So let's say that this was like your template site. I have it in here somewhere, but let's just say this was it. You clone the app, you go to select server, you can create a new server or that's what I do. And um, if you create that new server, then it's like an application or a website on its own server. I would recommend doing that for your clients. I don't recommend shared hosting or putting more than one uh, website on the same server because if you're being serious about this, your clients are gonna grow. They may end up needing more resources at some point and then it just gets really sticky because then you have to like scale a server that has multiple websites on it. It's just rough. Uh, Cloudways lets you do that and I've had to do that before. So like you could take it from like a one gigabyte server when they first start and then like they blow up and they have like a lot more traffic and everything and they need more power and you go to two gigabytes, four gigabytes, whatever. Again, don't wanna go super deep into that but the point is that you take that application, your template site application, which is just a regular version of WordPress, right? Like it's just like a, an application that is, um, uh, it's just like a website application on Cloudways just like any other one would be and you can clone it. Um, and then once you clone it, and, and let me actually interject here for a second. This is probably not a feature that is specific to Cloudways. There's probably so many other cloud platforms and probably even shared platforms where like all you're doing is just like taking the directory, the files in the WordPress installation for you know whatever other site you do, and 
um, and, and just cloning, literally just cloning it, right? Like just copying the files, it does it for you, just makes a new thing. It's like, okay, this is, you know, copy two or whatever of whatever you're doing. Um, I've just been using this method for a long time and I think there's a lot of people that, that just start fresh every single time and uh, I could see it being a real time suck. So just look into your current hosting and see if there's a way to clone websites is really what I mean. And then what you're gonna do is you're not gonna clone like a fully developed website. You're gonna start a fresh one. You're gonna build this template one time and then you're gonna clone that. That's that's the concept, right? That's what I did. I'm just past that point. So I'm gonna show you what the template looks like at this point. So that's, I feel like a decent uh, explanation of how that kind of goes. Again, I'm showing you with Cloudways, but if you have that, look into some, if you don't have Cloudways, look into something else. And if you have questions, drop them in the comments. Um, you know, more than happy to chat about that. Okay, so at that point though, you have, let's say you're starting fresh, you have a fresh install of WordPress that you want to turn into your template site. If you're doing this right now, the idea is that you're not gonna ever use this site. What I mean is this site is, I have a, a, a application on this server here, on one of the servers that I have at 14, that just sits there, it does nothing. And you could, you know, in Cloudways, for instance, you could have multiple apps on the same server, so you could have that on the same server as like your main website or whatever, so you're not like wasting money on a whole server uh, just for the template thing. But the point is that when you have the template set up, it's just like a template in, you know, Google Docs or something. You don't ever wanna edit the template, you wanna like create a copy of that template in a sense, right? So getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but let's continue here. <clears throat> so if we have a fresh install of WordPress, then you know there's a lot of settings and things to go through. I'm gonna try to go through like the, the, the most of them that I can, um, but this one's already kind of built out. So I'm just kind of gonna go through everything and talk about uh, the things that you should maybe get rid of, things that you should probably have. I have a whole list of um, agency software that we that we have. So I'll run that by you if you're like thinking about using any of those because there's a lot of value that you can add to your clients. A little bit more in depth, maybe we can go deeper into it in a different video, but I'll show you it here just as a sneak peek. We are sitting in <clears throat> this template site that is already built out, right? You can see that I've changed some things. When you first get into a fresher install of WordPress, like I said, it's not gonna have all this stuff. It's gonna have, I think two plugins. I think it still has that Hello Dolly one, get rid of that, stupid. Um, and then the anti, um, spam, like anti, I don't know what, to, I don't know how to pronounce it or whatever. Just, I, I normally get rid of them. So I get rid of that. And again, I will say that you're maybe, you might not set this up the same exact way, but I'm gonna tell you why I build with the things I build, at, like I said, at a high level. So we're gonna install things like Elementor, Jet Engine, and all that sort of stuff, because I think it's a good place to start. So you wanna change things like perhaps in the settings, right? So if you go to general, <clears throat> You should probably change the site title just like template site or you know company template site or something like that because if you do that then you're, it's you know it's going to be just less confusing and then and then all that you don't really need to worry about too much else um, but the point is that these are the settings that you all the settings that you change every single time right now when you start a new website make sure that these are the way that you want them to be most of the time I'll give you for instance maybe on 30% of the websites you have people able to, you know, register as a user. Well, you if it's if it's less, if it's the minority of times, you probably wouldn't want to have this checked. You know what I mean? You can always you're always going to go through on the other end when you do clone this template site after it's built and you build a, and and you're going to build a client site, you're always going to go and tweak more things, but these are like your your default settings is kind of what we're doing here because they're probably going to be different than WordPress. Let's talk about some examples here. So like maybe you change like the default post category and stuff like that. A lot of this is preference. So I'm, I'm gonna show you kind of like the things that like I change here. I can't remember if it's, if this is still latest post at this point in, in WordPress, but make sure it's static page and maybe like, we'll, we'll create a page here in a second or up, you know, I'll show you the pages that I have created. It's changed a little bit, but like create a home page, okay, in, in the thing and set it, set your home page to home. You could do a blog as well, but Again, if not all of your websites have blogs, then I would try to keep this as like the minimum um, requirements so you're not like ever deleting things once you clone it and, and start it for a client. Discussion, this is a huge one. I don't know anybody really that, that, I mean, I know there are people that still use WordPress comments, but it's it's a really easy way to get spam. 
and I'm not saying there's there's still other ways even if you kind of turn this off I think but make sure that you turn off like if you don't want if you're never gonna have comments on blogs make sure you turn this off um, because like you could have a hundred blogs and then they could all be I mean you can go back and turn the comments off individually but like if you do this from the start then it's not gonna you know individual posts can override these but like if you just do it from the start every single time then you're never gonna have uh, you're gonna have, mitigate a lot of those issues go through any of these and see if you want um, you know like I said <clears throat> most of this stuff is probably kind of default when we get to the plugins and everything like that that's what I mean is so you don't have to like manually install everything um, media again I, I most of this is probably default like for me I haven't seen a real issue to change it I like custom structure for the permalinks I like category and then post name uh, personally um, for any blog work and again it might change depending on it. if you don't have like a lot of categories maybe you go post name but definitely don't use like plain terrible for SEO like don't use any of these these other ones I mean it's got to be post name or, or a custom thing that you think is is better in that front privacy if you had a privacy policy page you can do it um, I'll talk about that in a second but I actually use um, termageddon there'll be a link to them really really love the company can't say enough about them. I'll make more content here in the future on it. But um, if you have a uh, privacy policy page at some point, you could set that up here. If you want to make a default one and set it up, you could. Um, so that that's an option as well. I think that's more of a newer thing. Happy files. So um, we'll get into this in the plugins thing, but I'm just going through the settings here. Happy Files Pro actually just got it today as I was revamping all this. I would really highly recommend that. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. And then main WP child, we'll talk about that. Um, so let's go through some of the other stuff. Users, there's nothing really there. Plugins, we'll go through all of them. Let's start with themes. So themes, I use Hello Elementor. Reason I use that at a high level is because it is built by Elementor. I use Elementor as my primary page builder, and it just works the best because it's you know built by them. Um, it's extremely lightweight, which means there's like I literally never ever 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 click customize. I never do that. And I want that customized section of the website, the customizer. I don't want anything there, like as, as little as possible. They've done some stuff to like, even like, like help. Like if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Hello Elementor, there's like a header and footer thing now. I don't use that at all. I I I just use the um, like the actual theme builder within the Elementor page builder. Do the header and footer. You can build however you want. Again, topic for a different time. But that's the that's my theme of choice. Um, and I never use the customizer at all. If we go up to pages, so I used to have like an about a contact um, and you know like a home page just as default because I figured I would need them. The more I build websites, like yes, you're probably going to need those things, but at the same time, like I don't know what I need when I need it. So you're always going to have a home page. So I just made the home page. Um, you know, you could set it as the front page based off of those settings that we talked about earlier, and you know, again, thinking long term, when you clone this site and you jump in here for the first time, you can literally just, you know, change the change the title uh, to your new business to the client's name, and then literally just start editing. You know, so that's that's kind of the point of it. You don't have to necessarily delete anything. Some you you obviously have to create things that are specific to that, but you know, there's a lot of stuff here that's uh, going to put you in the right direction right away. So <clears throat> if we go back down to appearance now. What I did with the menu is just have a menu ready already. Like have a um, you know create already created a new menu. Just call it main nav menu or something. If you had more default pages that you're always going to use, if you're like if, for instance, if you this is actually really valuable if you build the same type of site all the time. I actually don't as much, but if you always build five page websites for. Uh, you know a specific niche and they always normally have similar pages just make all those pages make the nav menu in there and then just kind of change it you know for each client clients individual needs um, you know I'm just trying to save people time here just kind of give some some thoughts none of this is really um, you know groundbreaking I'm just telling you kind of what I've done so that that's a that's an idea for you though let's go to the media library I suppose and uh, take a look at this so this probably looks different if you've never heard of happy files because Happy Files used to have a free version. Now they don't, I believe, and they only have a paid version. It is sixty dollars for uh, unlimited websites for life, like one payment. I would highly recommend you get it. Um, it's it's helped me organize so much stuff, especially when you are dealing with clients. I'm going to explain why. 
if you go in here and you add like, you know, 10 pictures or whatever, and they're all like, maybe let's say five of them are blog posts, two of them are team member headshots, and then some testimonial, uh, you know, client logos or something, you can make folders, you can organize all of this stuff in the media library, you can drop them in there, you can see there's like, it says one right now, I'm not sure, I think there's a hidden image somewhere or something like that, I don't know. But my point is like, this could be a list of just like, almost like a, a file explorer in Windows or a finder in Mac or whatever, and you could just, you can just organize everything, it's awesome. Um, and that is super valuable because I don't know why WordPress doesn't have that built in yet. I was actually waiting because I didn't want to necessarily buy Happy Files Pro uh, because that seems like a feature that should have been in there, but it's neither here nor there. I'm happy to support them because it's a great product. The other thing too is if we pop back down to Happy Files, you can do it in other stuff. I actually have not changed, I have not messed around with this yet. Uh, so if I do, you know, I'll make more content on it, but there's a bunch of different settings here. And even like, you can even like categorize different things within the, the, the WordPress ecosystem, not just media, but also post pages. <clears throat> not exactly sure how that all works because it's not a taxonomy. It's almost just like a view, like a categorizing in, in the display. I don't know. Um, it's kind of cool. P categorizing plugins is actually kind of an interesting concept. Um, so I don't know <clears throat> if there's more information about this that I find and I play around with and I'll let you know. But um, like I said, for $60 one time, it's a really good investment. I would consider doing it uh, sooner rather than later because um, your media library will absolutely thank you. If you have, I'm pretty sure it comes with a hello world post, delete it um, and uh, trash it and, and delete it forever. And then if you have posts that you like for some reason would want to put as a, you know, like a default thing always, then do that. But um, I, I probably wouldn't. Uh, and yeah, so then let's talk about now, let's talk about like the actual meat and potatoes of this, like the plugins. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to the plugins list <clears throat> and I'm also going to show you, give you the inside look at, uh, the agency, um, software licenses that we have that we've, I believe have, well, I mean, I know numerically and, um, you know, financially a ton of value for our clients. Have added a ton of it as we've invested in agency licenses that are benefiting all the clients that we uh, that we serve, and um, you know more content to come as far as how we implement that. But um, we can kind of go through back and forth. I'll show you the list first, and then we'll kind of go back there just so you get an idea. So I'm talking to you specifically as somebody that builds websites and wants to create as much value as possible for your clients, and wants to like it is willing to invest to make your business and your clients, you know, business better and clients happier. But also bearing in mind some of like the, what I've gone through over the past three, four years is I have specifically gone through different stages to try to find things that are my, my philosophy with buying things and adding things to this template site, if you will, or my, the, my stack that I build with in WordPress is I want to make sure that it's efficiency is top of mind. I want to limit the amount of plugins that we do. You'll see here in a second, I've gotten this down to a reasonable amount. Of Some people probably don't think it's reasonable, but it trust me, it's reasonable for the amount of functionality you have. Then, and also like just, we don't want to spend a lot of money. So a lot of these things are lifetime plans, obviously, um, because there's a lot of value there. But at the same time, like be just be willing to invest money if if you if you use something a lot and uh, it would benefit your clients, um, and uh, and don't just buy things frivolously. Have an actual reason to buy it, and then don't. And then and the last point is like if you if you have a uh, some sort of plugin, it's cool to find like something that's free to use, right? But at the same time, realize that when you're paying for something, it's probably going to be higher quality. It's probably going to perform better. And you know, if you already have something, do not like go out and buy something that the feature, the functionality is already in. Check what you have first. This is just goes in business in general. Check with the stuff that you have first to make sure you can't do what you need, and then find the best option to fulfill that that need. So with all with all that being said, I'm I'm not going to go through. Well, I'll, I'll go through this this list kind of, but um, but if you if you take a you know if you pause the video and just take a look at what you're kind of doing, what we're kind of looking at here, you can kind of kind of see my my thought process. So we have the tool in the first, the tool, service, plugin, whatever you want to call it in the first column. Then we have our license um, renewal, like the timing or you know whatever. Then we have how many domains it costs. And some of this information might not be exactly accurate, so double check if you want to 
play around with any of this. And I'll have, like I said, links and everything in the description if you want to check these out. Some of them might be affiliate links. If you want to support the channel, I appreciate it. If not, just go to the website and buy it. Um, expense, expense for us is like, um, kind of goes in line with the license renewal. I'll explain that. And then cost to replace uh, the domain. That is a, that's like the value. If, if you use these things in your website, you are providing value to your client. And the value could be, you know, specifically in this case, we're just making it do a dollar amount, but that's what be, would be to replace it. So I'll give you an example. So, so main WP, we have the lifetime plan. We paid $500. Okay. Uh, number of domains, it's, unlim it's unlimited. It's not like main WP is a, is a tool to manage all of your sites from one place. There's a different options out there. We chose that one, maybe more content in the future if you'd like uh, on why, but um, the expense for us, like recurring expense is nothing because we have paid one time and we have it. But if they wanted to replace that, that's a bad example because they probably wouldn't, but they would have to pay like $200 a year for either like one domain or whatever this lowest tier is, right? So that right there, it's helping us. That's not a direct one. Like Elementor Pro is a better example. We pay annually. It, it's for a thousand domains and we're at the $150 uh, a year thing because we're grandfathered in because we've had it for a while. I think the price is more now. But if they wanted to, if we're using Elementor Pro to build their website and then they like wanted to go somewhere else or do something different or whatever, they have to pay $59 per year to have a license of Elementor Pro because they're no, they would no longer be a benefiting from what we have. And this goes back and forth. This isn't to like trap anybody. This is literally to provide value. They are gonna get so much more value working with us and our expertise and our, um, you know, in our just, our, our knowledge in the space plus all of these things that, you know, if they ever wanted to leave, we just make them aware of all this stuff and then, you know, they can, you know, we have a contingency contingency plan and they can, you know, they can uh, they can go about their merry way. We're not trying to trap anybody. We're just trying to provide value as much as possible and really make it as convenient as possible. Do not, I would not recommend, if you build your business on Elementor Pro, like if that's what you build with, don't make every single one of your clients purchase a $60 a year license for Elementor Pro. Just do it yourself and then charge them that plus, you know, maybe margin or whatever on it. But don't like don't make them handle more things than they have to because they're not in this space. Like think about all the time and energy that you've probably put into figuring this out. Like do it, do it, make it more convenient and more valuable for them. They'll be happy to pay the money if you're making it valuable. Okay, so let's quickly go through the rest of these. So like Crocoblock, Jet Engine, right? We have the lifetime plan of that. Jet form builder came with that, so we have a lifetime plan of that. It's really nice too. If you're if you're if you think that a tool is gonna benefit you, there's there's a debate to be had on lifetime licenses because you know, you know, if you pay one time, then it's like, you know, from a plug-in perspective, it's like, well, they're not getting recurring revenue, so that do they have an incentive to continue to to implement and stuff like that? But from a consumer perspective, I mean a lifetime thing is really good. I mean, that is absolutely worth its weight in gold for for nine hundred dollars. I'll tell you honestly, that 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 suite is amazing. I'll show you a little bit of it here in a minute, and it, it there's hours and hours and hours of content on Jet Engine. You should definitely check it out. Uh, Dynamic OO um, uh, lifetime as well. So again, think of this from a business standpoint. We are not paying for these things. Like we paid for them one time, invested one time, and we don't have to pay for a lot of them um, because they were the lifetime plan. Um, but if if we were using functionality, I'll give you an example real quick on that one. Dynamic calendar, add to calendar links. That's actually the reason I had to get that. And it's got a lot of other functionality, obviously, but that's the reason I had to get that because a client wanted that. If they wanted to buy that, that's $60 a year for like one small thing that they wanted. We invested in it and they don't have to. So, and, and there's a lot of other functionality that I'm gonna have to use many other times, I'm sure, but that's the point, right? Those types of things are value adds. So um, Trust Index, which is like a review um, platform that you can like automatically put in uh, Google, Facebook, all sorts of other things. That one's a big one. Actually, that one's not a uh, lifetime, but we have that. I'll show you some more stuff when we go over there. Uber Suggest, Tabby Files Pro, um, WordPress Ultimate CSV up importer. If you use Jet Engine, I'm pretty sure you almost have to use that if you want to import and export because it's the only one that really does um, uh, custom fields. <clears throat> Chat GPT Plus. We're writing content with AI nowadays, okay? That is a part of it. That's a huge value add. Affiliate WP, SendGrid. Um, LE Custom Skin Pro is kind of, we have a lifetime plan, but it's kind of like, on the outskirts because we don't really use that anymore because Jet Engine has kind of taken over that whole thing 
and Elementors came a long way too. So that plugin is was fantastic for many years, but it's kind of uh, unnecessary at this point. Late Point, um, tried that one time. Uh, check it out if you're interested. It's like a scheduling, it's, it's a kind of a cool scheduling type um, plugin for booking appointments and stuff, but have, haven't really deployed it anywhere. And then Breakdance, tried that out one time. Don't really know, don't really have an opinion on it. Might be really good in two years, but right now it's still Elementor is the king. So I gave you the, the rundown of the agency licenses we have, but what I'm gonna tell you now is like a lot of the stuff that's in this actual template site installed as a plugin is, you know, there's definitely overlap, but there's some other good things in here uh, that I like to have on every, pretty much every website. That's the, obviously again, the, the, um, the, the idea here is that within, um, within this list, there's only 19, as you can see. So you might think that's a lot, you might think that's a little, but I'll tell you with these 19 uh, plugins, I can pretty much do almost anything that you would want with WordPress. That is definitely, definitely uh, hyperbolic to a certain extent, but there's a lot, okay? And I can't go into it all in this video because uh, I want to try to wrap it up here soon, but I'm going to show you exactly the uh, plugins that I have installed here and I would install personally on every single website. So this bot protection is specifically from um, Cloudways. And it's actually, I guess they have a, a partnership with Malcare, which is interesting because I didn't realize, I didn't put two and two together there because I was just looking at some security stuff, which we can talk about uh, in a second here. But bot protection, that's just from uh, my hosting. So if your hosting has something that like kind of partners with it, uh, you know, maybe that's maybe that's a, a possibility that um, that you would have updated there. But that that is a Cloudways specific thing. Code snippets. I actually try to not use code snippets as much as possible because like I just, I don't know. I mean, there's, I don't put it in like the, the actual functions thing or anything. I normally, I normally do use code snippets if I have to, but I just don't use it as often enough as I need to. Um, I don't know the ins and outs on specifically, like if this is better or if it's smarter or like less smart to put this in code snippets rather than functions PHP, but it's definitely way more manageable. So if it, if it works to me, it works. Um, I do like it, great plugin, free. Would highly recommend it if you need to add, you know, like PHP or specific, you know, uh, like actual like uh, snippets in the in the head or whatever of your uh, of your website. Definitely, everybody knows about that one. I think so. Definitely a good one to have. We talked about Dynamic OO. Um, again, that is more of a secondary thing. Jet Engine can do so much that it takes a lot of the the work out of Dynamic OO. Like as far as like restricting content. Um, visibility of certain content based on certain conditions. Um, so I try not to use that primarily. I try to use it when I have to fill in uh, the functionality that, that uh, Jet Engine can't do. Elementor and Elementor Pro, the, I mean, just the best, the granddaddy. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be the best forever, but they have gone through a period of, of rebuilding now. It seems like they're actually back on like making really good improvements to the platform. I'm happy to see that because I've had that that you know, I've been invested in Elementor since the beginning, pretty much since I learned about it. So happy about that. Happy Files Pro. We talked about it. Um, I would look into it at minimum. It's a small investment. Definitely a quality of life improvement, if nothing else. iTheme security. I'm not going to go deep on this. There's so much different information out there. WordFence, iThemes, Malcare, uh, all-in-one security, WordPress. I don't, I don't know whatever it is. Um, I've used iThemes. I've used I've used the free version of WordFence on everything, pretty much. It's been fine. I've used iThemes on uh, a couple sites as well. I think I'm going to try to lean into iThemes. I don't know if I'm actually going to purchase the pro version of either, but I'll tell you one reason that I chose iThemes, and it's because it actually. Was a, once I figured this out recently, it, it even the free version was able to take functionality um, that I was using a different plugin for. There's a plugin called WPS Hide Login. You should look into this because you should definitely have this functionality, whether it's that plugin or iThemes or whatever. When you ha when you start WordPress <clears throat> and you uh, install a new thing, to manage the backend, you you go uh, domain name slash wp dash admin, right? Or WP, you know, login PHP, whatever, and it goes to the site with the, the username and the and the login. 
you don't want to do that because you're going to get hit with so many like like so many you're still going to get it probably but you're going to get so many more like tries at your password and your and your uh, and people to log in like they'll use admin or whatever make sure you have a strong password and everything like that too but the point is if you leave that default everybody and their mother knows that that is the default thing so you got to change that and there's a lot of people that don't change it right like go to a wordpress website and slash and go slash wp admin see how many people actually have it there what iThemes has a feature in there is you can hide the back end is what they call it but just hide that login so you could change it to literally anything you want like you know probably change it to something kind of unique i've seen like some other words you know just like management or something silly but like my point is make it something other than what it is currently which is wp admin um because it'll hide all the other ones it'll you can throw it to a 404 when somebody tries to go there it's not perfect by any means it might still pop up like if somebody like really dug through the code but it just makes it a little bit more difficult and the automated attacks probably won't hit you as much so if you have that problem definitely check that out um, because I know it doesn't and and iThemes probably isn't the only one that does it it's just the one that I saw and I was using another plugin literally just for that so if I can take away a plugin that I don't need and do it there that's the way to go so that's that um, next one is uh, jet engine I cannot even start to tell you how much jet engine has changed the way that I develop websites because it's it's gone crazy jet engine that that investment has taken the, the things that I can develop 10x them the amount of things that I can develop, the things that I can do with WordPress. And not only that, it is also reduced the, everybody talks about like when you see this list, they're like how many plugins you have and all that sort of stuff. Or when you start like adding more things to WordPress, like, oh, you can't have a lot of plugins, it'll you know hurt performance. Well, there's kind of ways around that and there's different schools of thought on that. But my point is, specifically with Jet Engine, is that it took away the need for custom post type UI and uh, advanced custom fields for me. 99% of the time, unless for some reason, like advanced custom fields could do something that jet engine can't, but that's relatively few and far between. So if you're not familiar with those two, I, I see a lot of people get, um, marketed in this other one. I don't even know what it's called. It's called like our portfolio, probably like portfolio items or something. You don't, if you're, you, you can try that. I've never used it. I've just seen it so many other places, but all that is is custom post types, and we're not getting into this discussion right now, but the point is with Jet Engine, you can create the post types, you can create the fields, you can create the listing items, and you can do these grids that are unbelievable. Like the querying in Jet Engine is next level. It's something like if you're familiar with Elementor and you have any idea what I'm talking about right now, like you will be blown away when you can figure out how to do this. Like you can put you can so I ha the reason I got Jet Engine, quick quick aside, is because I wanted to do a list of categories. Okay, which is simple enough, right? But within those lists, within each list of category, like let's say there was, um, you know, uh, I don't know, let's say videos or let's say movies. So let's say horror, action, drama, okay? So horror, action, drama. And I wanted this all to be dynamic and I have these post types in here. So I have uh, a bunch of, you know, movies, okay? Movie post type. And then in there I have, you know, the data along with those, like, a, you know, maybe a picture and a title. And then they're categorized as, you know, action, drama, horror, or whatever. I want to display a big list. So each one has a title. And within each one of those, there would be like all of the movies for that category. You can do that with like nesting a listing grid is what it's called. So think of it as like a, an Elementor posts widget in a way. It's like kind of the same concept, but you can nest them together. Now, I'm not sure if you can do this with Elementor now because... Elementor has changed since I got Jet Engine, but my point being that like it it goes so much further because all the things that you can do to query just look up just literally type in Jet Engine query query builder and you'll be you'll be amazed if you really want to dig into it and you have a reason for it. So I would highly recommend it if you haven't messed with it before. Um, you know, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description. It'll probably be an affiliate link. So if you want to, if not, go to the website and check it out. Um, Jet Form Builder came along with that, and that has changed as, as well. Like, I don't use Elementor Forms anymore because that is something that I felt was lacking. Jet Form Builder is crazy good. There's so many options. There's so many different things. It's literally like building almost in, in Gutenberg in a way. Like, it's building in the um, the WordPress editor, and um, it's just, it, it makes everything uh, a lot better. There's just so many, so many ways to customize things, so many different types of fields, so many different actions afterwards, you know, multi-step and all that sort of stuff. So 
that is really good. You can do some seriously complex forms in that. Uh, I would highly recommend this. The select autocomplete thing is um, is just another. Is there's a bunch of add-ons too. Like you know, you can add on like HubSpot. You can add on different different types of things. Again, type that in. Give give it a look because it's definitely worth it. Main WP Child and Child Reports. Those are so this would be a site because every like think of it as a, a network. I have Main WP like a dashboard of all the websites that I uh, that I support for my clients, and then. And then main WP kind of like does a bunch of stuff in the background again, more more in a different video perhaps, uh, to plug it, to update all the plugins and themes and everything. Kind of manages all that and kind of automates that to the best of my ability. And um, those plugins are just to kind of like connect this website or the new website into that that network, if you will. It's not really a network, just into that into that plugin, and um, and everything works great there as well. Um, Real quick on main WP, the reason I picked that is because that is a fully self-hosted platform. You actually make a WordPress website and put the main plugin on it, and then you do it yourself, rather than like Manage WP, which is GoDaddy owned, or some other ones where like it's like a plugin that you, it's like a, it's a platform that you log into and give access to. I, I was on main WP, switched to Manage, and now I'm back on main WP. I'll never leave because it's the it's the best way to go in my opinion. Nitro pack, new thing, videos on the channel. It's I mean, it's game changer. It it literally takes when you start when you start adding Jet Engine and Elementor, your sites can get kind of slow depending on how you're building and everything because there's just so much power and, and functionality. But Nitro pack, I mean, it's ridiculous. It just makes it so much faster. The scores are high. The user experience is high. Really, all it's doing is just optimizing and compressing images and using a CDN, like you know, like it, all of that, like into one. Um, it's going to be on every one of my client sites from now on because I want the stuff to be fast. And I was never even really using like all these other plugins. There's all these plugins like oh, WP Ultimate Cache or whatever the hell it's called, and like all these random image caching plugins and compression compression plugins where it's like you have to buy credits or you have to do this that or the other thing. Like this basically does it all, and it's a monthly fee, and you can pass it off to your customers, and they're going to get so much value out of it. It's it's it just makes sense to me. Rank Math, um, maybe used to use SE uh, Yoast, but um, Rank Math has been the go-to since pretty much I learned about it, probably like two years ago. It's got a lot right out of the box, just on the free version, which is what this is, and I would recommend it because I don't. Yoast is fine too, um, but Rank Math is uh, is great in my opinion. So that's that. Site Kick by Google. I used Monster Insights for a long time. And then I decided to change to SiteKit by Google when that when that came out because it's literally by them. I figured it was probably a better solution. It doesn't ask you to like upgrade and do different stuff like Monster Insights was, which I understand. But it's from them. It connects to search. It's it like it connects and creates like the Search Console, the analytics, uh, the PageSpeed Insights, uh, and AdSense if you have that too. Like all together in the one plugin when you when you go through the setup on a new website. Um, so I always have it, and then and the reason I'll, I'll say this real quick too is like the reason that I have these ones not activated is because you do set them up on the thing, so it's like they're ready to go, and like you build it in your process. So as soon as you build the website, then you you know then you uh, go through each one of these and you set them each up, but they're all like ready to go, kind of at the um, you know in the template site, and then when you clone it over. Uh, Termagen user centrics. So Termagen is a great company. Um, founder is amazing. Uh, talk to him frequently. Great product, great um, value proposition, and fantastic for your clients. I would actually recommend that you take a look at it, but I would also recommend that you stop thinking that you don't need legal policies on your websites for the clients that you build, um, or at least tell them that they need them and then make them sign if they don't uh, want to go ahead and, and move forward with them because you do need privacy policy. You do need potentially disclaimers, terms and conditions, stuff like that. Uh, it's a really good thing to have. Uh, cookie policy, especially like GDPR or whatever. I'm in America, so I don't necessarily know uh, like all the stuff that's uh, that's regarding that. I haven't del delved completely into that uh, section yet, but I know there's just a lot of stuff there. And the digital world's getting vast, and the platform that they have is you just answer questions and it builds a policy for you. It's like amazing. Um, so I'm going to do more content on that because I, I really, I really believe in that product and it's extremely affordable. 
especially if you become an agency partner and you can continue to do that as well. But even if you're just individual, it's, it's a great tool. So that's going to be on every one of my client sites as well. Moving forward, uh, I use Updraft, Updraft Plus for backups. And so I back up directly to Cloudways. And then I also back up uh, via Updrafts and save in Google Drive. Potentially, maybe one more place at some point, but for now, that's fine. And um, I would highly, highly recommend that you don't just take server backups. Like, don't just rely on your server hosting company to take backups. Do like updrafts or something, something other than just that. Get it to Google Drive, save it locally. Maybe be even, even better option, but just do that and try to do it as often as possible. I would actually like to do daily backups for everyone moving forward and save maybe like the last three days. I think that's like a good position. Um, and Updrafts is, is a very good platform for that. And that's the free version. So never had a problem really there. Um, so yeah, web accessibility by Accessibility. Every website should probably be ADA compliant. And if your clients aren't aware of that, then you should make them aware of that. And I uh, am also gonna do that for every single client moving forward now. So. If somebody comes to the website and you know they have some sort of disability or something, it's going to be accessible for them. There's going to be a little pop up on the side, and they can you know do all the different stuff, high contrast, all that sort of stuff. Um, because I don't want my clients to catch a lawsuit in that regard either. Um, so I'm going to just make that decision for them, and they're going to obviously these things come. Some of these things come with costs, but that that's that's the cost of doing business, and that'll be uh, part of the value proposition as well. Last one in there is uh, that trust index. So it's w widgets for Google reviews, which you can actually get that for free, I think. But there's a lot more f features, functionality, customization if you get the the uh, plan. And that was uh, the 350 a year one, but that was like unlimited sites. You could get a smaller one if you wanted to. But again, uh, with the methodology there, it just makes sense. But that's a really good one because reviews on websites are important, testimonials and everything, but also seeing it as a Google review rather than just like text in a picture specifically is even more impactful. So if they have like a lot of Google reviews or Facebook reviews, you can just like populate them in there. And then the other thing is you don't have to manage them. Like it automatically refreshes and pulls in new ones. It's amazing. There's probably other things that use it, but that one is that one is fantastic uh, as well. Um, the last thing is WP Activity Log, which I'm actually very confused why it's not in this list. I have to look into that again. Uh, Might have like hit it or something, but. WP Activity Log is like a really cool one because it shows you everything that everyone does on the website. Um, let me take that back. It might not be every sing. It could. I think it's every single user, um, but it's definitely like you can you could filter it and do different stuff. And I'm sure there's a paid version, but it just keeps a log literally of like if I change something on a page or whatever, or if I access a different thing, or if somebody logs in. It's a really cool concept to have. Um, just like kind of an all-seeing eye over like what's going on on the website. Um, there's a, I'm sure again there's other things that do that. Probably even like some security plugins can kind of give you a better take on that. But I've had that on the websites for a long time. Never really had any, excuse me, never really had any issues. And um, and I think it's it's definitely been uh, beneficial in certain times when I was like, did I, what did I do like last or like did somebody. Like if a real good example is if like a client is managing part of their website and like you don't know exactly what they did to have something to make something happen, it just gives you a good log of that. So that's just one just one way that that could be uh, beneficial. Um, okay, guys. Well, that is pretty much it. Um, long video always is. Sorry, but I uh, hope you got some value out of this. Hope you at least learned about a couple of new plugins maybe that you hadn't learned of before. If you have some stuff that you use in every single one of your websites that I don't have here, definitely let me know about it because I'm always, I'm, one of my goals is for every single website to get you know better and better. So if there's more value that I can pack into this to uh, serve to my clients or to build websites that I wanna build, I definitely wanna know about it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you don't have this yet, I would highly recommend it. I would highly think about like some way to just optimize your process, make yourself more efficient, build like a template site out so you can just clone it rather than having to start from scratch every single time. It's gonna save you a ton of time. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, like I said, link in the description down below. Um, also have a link in the description. Um, if you have any questions, what did I just say there? If you have any questions, then put in the comments down below. If you have, uh, if you'd like to chat or anything like that, I have a service now. There's 
recent video on the channel about the consultation call. That'll be a link in the description as well if you want to chat. Um, be more than happy to do like a one on one. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of success with that. Other people have, have reached out to me. It's been great. I'm always happy to help in any form that I can. So that's available to you. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I will talk to you in the next one.